Hello, good day. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about Colorfab's lightweight PLA. I was so impressed with this material that I decided to make a whole YouTube video about it. So I think this has been around for some time now. I've seen a few YouTube videos of people making planes and trying it out and making a couple other things. I'm also making an aircraft uh, as well. It looks like that. And it's not made with this lightweight PLA. And the reason for that is because I was a bit apprehensive about buying it uh, when, I got, when I got started. The thing is, like, when you go on the tutorial website, uh, you know, they're talking about, like, changing flow rate and changing speeds and temperatures and expanding materials. And it's, it's all, I think, very intimidating for somebody who's a bit new to 3D printing, like myself. Also, this filament is not, is not cheap. This, this set, a 750 gram spool cost me about 54 pounds. I live in the UK. And whereas like a typical PLA or ABS might be around 22, 20 something pounds. Um, so I didn't want to spend that kind of money on the, on the filament only to realize that maybe my printer couldn't handle it or it didn't really work the way that I expected it to. So I'm making this video mostly for people who are a bit new to 3D printing and hopefully explain how this works, uh, explain the calibration process in particular and how you can and explain how you can get up and running with it and uh, hopefully give you some confidence with buying the material and trying it out for yourself. So obviously the main advantage of printing in lightweight PLA is the massive reduction in density. I mean this thing you can get this down to around they say around 0.4 grams per centimeter cubed whereas PLA is around 1.24 grams per centimeter cubed uh, ABS is around 1.04 grams per centimeter cube and the material so for example so I've got a wing here uh, from the, one of my aircraft and I mean you have to do a lot to try to get this strong and also you need to print at roughly like a, 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 printing at one wall count um, to get this light and you can feel it's it's not particularly strong um, there's ways that you can get it stronger but it, it is a, a bit of a challenge to try to do that. Um, whereas if you're printing in this lightweight PLA, you can print easily with two, a two wall count, for example, make the material much stronger and you don't have to, and you don't have to incur any weight penalty for that. There's also a, another advantage is if you're printing in ABS, then you don't need, with lightweight PLA, you don't need an enclosure and you don't need as much heat, which means, and in the UK, electricity costs do, are quite high so um, if I don't have to print in that high temperature then I'll save a bit of money and electricity as well so let's get started I'm first of all I'm printing on uh, my Creality Ender 3 which is is really the bottom end of the 3d printing world um, but this that printer never ceases to amaze me to be honest with what it can print and for a printer that's under 250 pounds it's it's amazing um, value for money. I'm also using uh, Cura as my slicer and I also use Autodesk Fusion for my CAD modeling. Now what I've sort of hinted at is that obviously you can't, this, this material is not just, you can't just buy this, stick it in the printer and click print uh, unfortunately. So you do have a bit of calibration um, to do which we're going to get into now. So the first thing we're going to need is a veneer caliper. And the reason you need this is because you're going to be measuring the wall thicknesses of all of these cubes that you're going to be printing. So, so next you're going to be printing <laughs> a number of these cubes. Um, the thing, they don't need to be as big as what they have on the tutorial. Um, I printed my cubes are like 50 by 50 by 20 mil and the reason for that is because I didn't really want I only bought like a 750 gram spool and I didn't want to use like the entire spool to just to calibrate the printers so the first one you're going to print at 200 degrees Celsius um, you're gonna want to fix the print speed throughout the entire calibration right I set mine at 35 millimeters per second um, I think the on the tutorial they went down to 25 millimeters per second and I think if you do that then you can actually get more expansion by doing that. You can go up uh, to I think around 45 millimeters per second um, but I thought that you know f uh, 35 was a pretty good compromise in terms of getting expansion and not having to wait forever for my prints. 
So in your CAD modeling tool, go ahead and make a solid cube and we're going to put it into Cura and I'll show you how to prepare it for the first print. Right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to bring your solid cube into Cura and we're going to use the standard quality uh, profile as the sort of basis to start with. So we're going to set the wall count equal to 1. Uh, we'll set the top and bottom layers equal to 0 and your infill density to 0 as well. And then, so the temp print temperature and the flow are the two parameters that you're going to be varying throughout the calibration. Uh, the print speed, you're going to set this as a fixed value. I set mine at 35, and you're going to want to keep the print speed and the wall speed uh, the same. I think I set the brim equal to 2.5 as well, because I didn't really want to use too much material. So that's, that's it. So if we go ahead and slice this, you'll just get, a, you should get just a, um, a, a hollowed out cube with just a single layer um, in the walls. So now that you've got your first cube at 200 degrees Celsius at your chosen um, speed, uh, you'll notice that there is no expansion on this. So at 200 degrees Celsius, you don't get any expansion. So if we actually take the vernier caliper and we measure this, it should be the thickness of your nozzle, right? Because you've set the wall count to one, you will just end up with, so I got 0.4, I got 0.4, right, as my wall thickness, and that's because my nozzle diameter is 0.4. Now, you're going to want to successively print uh, at higher temperatures. So I, I just went straight up to 240, um, and then I printed one at 250 and one at 260. Now, at, at 250, for example, from the time you reach or get above 200, you should start to see some, some expansion, and the material is going to start to feel a bit a bit foamy um, and it looks completely different to what <laughs> to what you you print at 200 now at 250 I got my maximum expansion um, so I think the material expanded to if we measure that you'll see I get around 0.86 at 250 degrees Celsius so the material has almost double the volume and I've, I have not set the wall count to anything higher. It's still one wall count. It's just the material has now expanded. Now, I didn't really get any benefit by going up to 260. Um, I think it was roughly the same size. One thing to note um, is that the material doesn't expand uh, in, the, in the Z axis. It only expands in the X and Y plane. Uh, which I found really interesting. So it doesn't it doesn't you don't have to worry about it like the nozzle hitting it or anything like that. Now also the Ender 3 actually won't let you print anything higher than 260 degrees um, by default. So I I chose 250 as my 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 temperature for to continue printing with uh, simply because I, I didn't get any significant advantage by going to 260 and I also don't really like to operate my printer at the at the limits at its limits so uh, I chose 250 to, to continue with the next step of my calibration now now this is where the magic kind of happens and this is the part that I didn't really understand so now that when you're printing now that you've printed at 250 two things happen first of all your material density decreases you're obviously got an increased volume uh, for the same amount of mass but also more interestingly enough you've actually created now a discrepancy between what happens with Cura and what ha what's actually happening on the printer so remember Cura expects the wall to be 0.4 and what's actually happening on the printer is that this material is now double the thickness the Cura doesn't actually know that your material is actually expanding it's just it's just your Cura is just telling your printer go here go there go to this point it doesn't there's no setting in Cura that says uh, my material is expanding so to rectify that and to, we now need to re reconcile the difference in wall thickness with what Cura thinks is happening and what's actually happening on the printer because other, if you don't do that and you print exactly your models all your models like this um, you could end up with a situation where where Cura is going to tell your printer to print something next to a wall and you're going to end up messing up your prints because because your material would have expanded and 
curatorly printed to go there, but there's actually already material there. So I think you'll just end up with a mess, basically, which we all know what that looks like. So we need a way to reduce that thickness. And the way that we do it is by reducing the flow rate. Now, what you need to do is I, I you reduce the flow rate. The setting is somewhere in Cura. It doesn't show up by default, but you can you can just search through the settings and you'll find it to, to, to make it visible. Now, the first print I did um, with the reduced flow rate, I did it at 40% uh, percent and <laughs> the Ender 3 really didn't like that. Like It just came out sort of like in blobs. And the, I think the reason for that is because as the material is expanding, if you reduce the flow rate too much, um, it, it kind of chokes the hot end and you really, you know, and because of that, it, the material just has a hard time coming out of the, uh, coming out of the nozzle. So if that happens, you really want to stop the print immediately because you could end up just choking up your, your, your hot end and creating a mess or, or just, or, or, or worse. So my final print settings are 250 degrees Celsius at, uh, with a 50% flow rate at 35 millimeters per second. And that should give me a density reduction of around 50% in total, which I think is pretty is pretty good. So if we check the one at 50, if we check the print at 50% flow rate, uh, in terms of thickness, we can see that this has now come down to, you can see this has now come down to about 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.42, which I mean, that is, that is really good because, so remember, this this is now basically almost the same as that and remember Kira expects the wall thickness to be 0.4 and now we've brought it back down to 0.4 with a reduced density so that's that's basically how it works are you amazed does that amaze you yes maybe so i have an example here of my vertical um fin uh, that i took off the the airplane and so this is the lightweight PLA uh, version. So the, the thing to note is that the settings that you've put in here, you can still play around with um, your wall counts and your infill densities and stuff. So this is, I printed this at a two wall count with a 5% uh, infill density. And I put back on my top and bottom layers and you can see how that looks. Um, and it's fairly light, like this is around nine grams and the ABS, the one that I printed first in ABS, this was printed with like a one wall count with uh, a 3% infill density. And it, this is brittle, like I think if, if I, if I, ugh, if I, <laughs> if I uh, touch that too much, it'll, it'll, it'll kind of snap and you f I hear it breaking inside already. Uh, whereas this is, this is pretty strong. Like this is not going to, it's not going to break easily and it's a bit flexible as well. So I quite like this material uh, a lot quite a lot actually this is why I'm making making this video so so I've spoken a lot about the advantages uh, but I haven't spoken about the disadvantages so the the main disadvantage with this is is that it's it's rough like it's 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 not a smooth surface necessarily so it's not particularly suited well to like an aerodynamic surface um, whereas the ABS you can actually feel the lines it's quite smooth on the ABS or PLA will be quite similar as well Whereas this, you'd probably have to sand this down um, to get it to get it fairly smooth. You'll probably just get a significant increase in air and um, parasitic drag. But you know, so just don't. I wouldn't use it as it is for, on, on large aerodynamic surfaces. Uh, I also took like 120 grit sandpaper to this, and it did nothing to it. That's how strong it is. But so if you're gonna grind this down, you're gonna need some serious sandpaper. The the other disadvantage is the you don't want to print with too much supports on this because the supports tend to, because the material is expanding, it tends to expand a little bit into the uh, surrounding geometry and it, it holds quite, quite well. And this material is not brittle, like it's, 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 it's a bit flexible. So kind of when you try to pull it out and pull on the supports, it's almost like pulling on like, like, like a very like hardened marshmallow, basically, like, I don't know what else to describe it, but it's, it, they're not easy to come out because they don't they don't snap and then and, and break off like they would on normal PLA and ABS. So just be conservative with how much supports you're using in your lightweight um, PLA models. So so that's it. I hope this video was helpful to you, and I hope you now have understand uh, the calibration process and it makes sense to you and it gives you a bit of confidence to go out and um, have a go at this uh, lightweight PLA. So 
thanks for watching and I hope to see you in an, another video that I might make sometime in the future. Thanks.